Hi everybody. Oh. Hi. Hi everybody. I'm uh, Arzel. I'm uh, I'm a network engineer at Wikimedia, and I've been a private pilot since uh, 2016 uh, for both uh, land and uh, sea. And um, so during my since I started my pilot training, and still nowadays as uh, training never really stops, I realized that many aspects of uh, what makes the aviation industry safe, uh, equally for small and big planes, could be applied to the SRE realm. So I'll go over the one I identified and the one I'm trying to apply in my day-to-day -day job. So I will start with this famous saying, it's maybe the number one rule that instructor wants to get in their student brain. It's pretty much uh, comes down to whatever the issue is, flying the plane, keeping it in the air is the number one priority. Then when uh, things are under control, you can uh, figure out where to go and communicate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It might sound obvious, but many incidents and accidents are due to pilots being actually head down in whatever problem they're having instead of uh, focusing on keeping the plane in the air. Similarly, during an uh, incident response, it's very easy to go down the uh, troubleshooting rabbit hole and uh, lose situational awareness. While fixing, um, while fixing the issue is an important uh, part of uh, incident response, containing it is uh, equally critical. We can, for example, think of voluntarily shutting down other services to uh, ease uh, the load on the one that is uh, having an issue. Standard phraseology pretty much means speaking the same language. Aviation has very strict and very well-defined vocabulary. When someone says something on the radio, everybody on the same frequency exactly understand what this person's intent and uh, or authorization uh, are. There are no incertitudes. If something is not, not clear, then uh, you ask to repeat. It's totally fine, whatever the reason is. One of the worst aviation disasters actually was caused by usage of uh, non-standard phraseology. From, uh, in the SRE world, everybody comes from different backgrounds. So what's an incident? What's a server? Um, have you ever had a colleague ask you a question and you were like, mm, what is he talking about? Then imagine this during an outage. You will save a lot of time and frustration by clarifying terms ahead of time. And if you're not sure, it's fine to ask. Don't assume. Lots of incidents started by someone assuming something that ended up being wrong. A tip here is to replace all the indefinite article, like er or the, from a sentence. Sometimes it can be tricky or sound like exaggerating, uh, making the sentence more, more complex, but uh, other time it can help realize that the answer is actually in the, in the question. The last part of flight training is actually a theory walk on the ground. So you learn the physics of actually what makes a plane fly, including all the uh, physics formulas. You learn uh, all the electrical or a system works, all the fuel lines work. Uh, you learn how each instrument works, and uh, not only how to use them, but also like all the works in inside. It's not for fun, even though it's very interesting. But it's 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 made so if there is an issue, and you can already like start having guesses on what what the cause and how to fix or mitigate it if it's critical or not. And uh, vice versa, you know what consequences and input, like did you find like all the like hundreds of buttons uh, or flight control you're about to, about to touch uh, will have uh, on, your, on your system, on your airplane. Here the parallel is obvious and you have the extra advantage of uh, being able to ask colleagues to, uh, to get help. If you've ever list, listened to recordings of planes in emergency situation, you might have noticed that uh, pilots always have this calm voice, like you can uh, imagine the quotes uh, on the screen. But why? The main reason is uh, training, uh, training, training, training. Uh, you, we, we're trained for like every documented uh, issue that, that could happen. So if it's happened in uh, real, then uh, you already know what to do. Instruments not working, easy, like smoke in the cabin, engine failure, you know what to do. We already have a plan, we already like practice that with an instructor, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all good. And it, additionally, stress management is a uh, part of the training. So we know how to detect uh, stress and how to uh, deal with it and how to react of, uh, during unexpected situations. 
And so first aid training also teaches uh, that when you arrive on an accident scene, uh, you first like make a pause, then uh, you observe, and then you act. Just rushing in and uh, without actually like thinking of what's going on, risk making the situation uh, way worse. So here uh, you can imagine like practicing a fake incident response. Uh, don't let your uh, yourself or other uh, engineers uh, get rusty, even if you don't often have uh, outages. Uh, when working on an incident, uh, document what is being done also helps uh, getting clarity. And uh, of course, you're in a team, so multiple multiple people working together can help relieve the the stress. If there is a single improvement that led to considerably reducing uh, accidents, it's the use of uh, checklists. Startup, run-up, pre-takeoff, takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, landing, securing, and of course, uh, for all the possible uh, emergency situation, everything uh, that is related to an uh, airplane has checklist. It reduces considerably the amount of load of a task, and uh, it prevents uh, forgetting uh, one step that can be, uh, become uh, critical. During an emergency, for example, I don't want to have to rely on memory, even though memory helps you do something faster. You want to do something and you want to like, check that you're doing the proper things and not uh, pushing the wrong buttons, uh, basically. Checklists are also increasingly being used in other fields, uh, like uh, in, uh, in the uh, BBC article here uh, in uh, medicine, but pretty much like in all the industries at, the, at this point. Um, so you can do checklists for routing works, for example, like how to upgrade a system, and uh, then you uh, let the new hire follow the checklist and fix it, fix it if it's incomplete. It's a great way for someone to get familiar with a system and one less thing for you to do. And during emergencies, same thing, uh, one checklist per monitoring alert for Instiga or Nagios alerts is a good start. So if an alert comes up, someone, even if it's not you, knows uh, how, to, uh, how to react and what to do. It's a uh, checklist also a very great uh, starting points for automation. As already, uh, as all the steps are already well defined, then uh, you just have to uh, automate uh, the steps uh, one after the other. For that last point, uh, I will quote a colleague of mine, which is uh, also uh, with also a uh, flight instructor. Um, so, unfortunately, aviation's biggest improvements often come after accidents. So we do learn from mistakes, it is a must. That's why the incident investigation from American NTSB or the French BEA uh, are important. And they're not there to judge, they're only here to analyze uh, what happened exactly and improve it by, um, by uh, issuing recommendations or changes. I personally learned a lot by reading their reports. So everybody makes mistakes, we need together. So when everything is back to quiet, then uh, you can uh, sit down and uh, analyze what went well, because there must have been things that went well and uh, what can be improved, and without doing any finger, point, uh, finger pointing. As you, can, as you can see on the screenshot, uh, we had Multimedia out of fair share of uh, outages, big and small. And uh, if you're curious, you can check out how we're doing it, so if you're looking for a way to start. Yeah.